My name is Josh Byrne and I'm on a mission to prove that high performance housing is a realistic and affordable option for the mainstream housing market in Australia. And there's no reason for it to be held back. I'm on a national research tour, visiting exciting and innovative high performance housing projects to learn as much as I can and share it all with you. This is Josh's house, star performance. One of the biggest issues that all cities across the world have to face is of course population growth. And there's no better place in Australia to see this in action than Sydney. Its huge population and massive urban sprawl have long been recognised. And of course, this brings many challenges. In terms of housing here, there's a couple of things that I find really interesting. If we have a look at the stats and the huge number of new planning approvals for new builds every year, what they tell us is that despite the push for higher density living and new apartments, by far the main number of approvals are for detached housing on their own blocks. Now to me, this is an amazing opportunity. I'm seeing suburbs filled with high performance housing that generate more power than they use, that collect and recycle water with thoughtful landscaping, that really give something back that lead to increased and improved livability. The reality is this is far from the case and I've come to see what's available for the mainstream market now to help address this. I'm visiting a really significant project deep in the western suburbs of Sydney. It's a two-storey home built purely as a demonstration and research facility by building products manufacturer CSR. What's really unusual about it is that it sits on the site of a brick factory and no one will ever live here. But it's what the house can tell us that I'm really interested in. It is a research project where we aim to um, learn about the inefficiencies within the construction process during construction, but we're also uh, learning about the ongoing operation of the house. The design brief stipulated that the home had to fit the mainstream market in terms of looks and affordability. The overall comfort of the home was also a consideration, as of course was the performance. So take us through some of the key design and material features. Okay, so we've got a great solar aspect to this house. We have a lot of north facing glass. That coupled with the concrete slab gives us internal thermal mass for free heating in the winter. So the sun will penetrate right through deep into the house in winter. Whereas we've got a lot of shading for summer to keep the sun off the house. Sure. We can open up windows for um, crossway ventilation. And the other thing is that we've got a high level of insulation. So we've got R2.7s in the walls, okay. R5s in the ceilings. We've also got internal insulation that gives us a thermal benefit, but also an acoustic benefit as well. Yeah, okay. And uh, obviously zoning at the the room, the main living space as well? Yeah, so we've, we've zoned a lot of areas of the house just to minimise the volume of air that you want to condition. So if you're running the air conditioning system, that's not working so hard to try and heat or cool the entire house. So what we've found is that we were able to um, halve the size of the air conditioning unit compared to what the, uh, the industry says. I'm already super impressed with the thought that's gone into this design. And I'm interested to find out the considerations required for the second story of a high performance home. Nice and cosy up here. Yeah, it's great. It's uh, really, really light and airy. It is. So what yeah. are some of the things you think about on a second story in a high performance well, home? Well, on, on a second story, obviously hot air rises. So then on, on a hot summer's day, you've got to be able to purge that heat out. Um, you've got good shading. So we've got 900 wide eaves to limit the sun's penetration. But with the hot air accumulating up here, you've got to be able to purge that out over night time, which is why we've got the Edmunds Odyssey system okay. that basically monitors the outside air temperature, the roof space temperature and the living space air temperature. And when the outside conditions drop below the inside air temperature, uh, the ventilation system purges the heat out of the house. So all the fabric in the house, the, the carpets, the internal linings, the furniture, all, all gathers heat energy. And uh, right throughout the night time, by six or seven o'clock the next morning, generally that heat energy has been purged out of the house. One thing I have noticed is the acoustics are brilliant in this house. Yeah, it's not reverberating, it's not sort of clunky. It's the whole of house, so it's not just one uh, panacea to, to give you your acoustics or um, separate noise. So you're looking at external noise sources, so the high levels of insulation, the external cladding materials, internal walls are insulated, but the great thing is the Hebel floor. Hebel is a lightweight aerated concrete mm -hmm. and it's laid over the joists and it gives you a solid concrete slab feel. 
and you, you never get any creaking either. So you won't get creaking floorboards and the feel. It feels so solid. On top of the thermal efficiency features we've seen in this eight star rated house, energy efficient appliances and lighting have also been incorporated. Hot water is supplied via a super efficient evacuated tube solar hot water system with a gas booster and power is generated by the 1.5 kilowatt grid integrated photovoltaic system. What's different here is that the solar panels are built into the roof tiles to get the desired look. Water efficiency has also been considered with four and five star wells rated tapware and toilets chosen throughout, as well as low water use landscaping and a 10,000 litre rainwater tank connected to the toilets, washing machine and garden taps. All of this is very cool but it's the extensive monitoring system and performance data that I'm really keen to see. So take us through the monitoring that you're doing. Okay, so we've got 150 sensors installed in the house right. uh, that are monitoring a range of conditions in the house. They all come back, they're all wired with three and a half kilometres worth of cabling. They come, come down into the pantry that's not really used for food storage That anymore. is a cool cupboard. Yep. So we've got two boxes with data logging. Um, and all those blue cables just above that box there, they come out and, and go into the data logging system. It's a three and a half kilometres of Three and a half kilometres of cabling, yep. I've never seen so much monitoring equipment in a home. It's really impressive and I must admit that I'm just a little bit jealous. The data that's been gathered is valuable stuff and I want to find out what it's telling us. So I'm visiting CSI headquarters where the data is retrieved and analysed. So this is where you're monitoring the performance from? Correct. All the data comes back from the CSR house to um, head office here. Very cool. A lot of the stuff we're interested in is, is the temperatures and how, how well it holds temperature in both summer and winter. Mm -hmm. We have done some post-processing on um, some data in from a very hot period, yep. which was actually the hottest day on record. It peaked just over 45 degrees Ooh. on the 18th of January 2013. Uh, under those conditions, the house performed really well. We, we were very um, happy with the way it performed. The indoor temperatures in the living space peaking just over 30 degrees. Mm. You can see that it's a, it's a lot more comfortable inside than it is outside. Yeah. So that's summer. How about when it's cold in winter? Yeah, okay, so Sydney is a, a mixed climate, so it gets very hot, but it also gets very cold in Western Sydney. In this data you're looking at here, at night time it's, it's getting as low as 1.8 degrees. Mm. So it's, it's almost freezing. Yeah. And inside it's, it's up at 17 degrees during that same time period. Talk us through the sort of trade-off between you know, the thermal performance for that but also, say, the build-up of moisture and yeah, the issues. That's a balancing act, really. When you control the heat, then you're changing the, the temperature profile across your walls or across, across your roof cavities. And if you're keeping one surface warmer, then it stands to reason that another surface is getting cooler or remaining cooler. And in that scenario, there's, there's potential for condensation to occur. So we're looking at that as well, and we're measuring uh, roof-based temperatures, for instance, that are uh, measuring the cladding surface, the, the tiles on top, the, the sarking underneath the tiles, and then um, what's happening in that roof space in terms of is, is that sarking reaching dew point, and is it likely to cause any moisture issues. For us, the big issue is, are our products contributing, well they're, they're providing a benefit, a, a more energy efficient, a more comfortable, more thermally stable home. But in that process, are they having a side effect? And we have to manage that. From a building products perspective, we, we need to develop new products, new systems, being wall systems, floor systems, roof systems that work from the heat management, the moisture management, as well as the airflow management. So leakage through your building envelope. And I take it this data collection and the subsequent analysis will be critical to that process? Correct. Um, this, is, this is looking at all those mechanisms by, by heat transfer, moisture transfer and air transfer. It just takes time to disseminate that knowledge, learn and then teach industry on how, how to get these things right. Do you see it as being realistic that we can see an increase in the performance of homes through better use of these materials without it being a big cost burden? Uh, definitely. That was one of the key uh, aspects of this project was that uh, the question we wanted to ask was how can we build an eight-star house for as little cost in increase over a six star house. Um, and yeah, there is additional cost um, today, but we think um, with further research and, um, and better construction systems, um, better supply chain management and better operations on site when, you, when builders are building houses, that those costs can be brought down so that the cost imp implication for seven and eight star housing is not so much as it currently is. 
I reckon this is a fascinating project, both technically, but also due to the fact you've got a major building materials manufacturer pushing for higher performance homes. Now all too often we hear that this is something that should be expected from consumers asking for greater performance, but these guys are pushing for it, both in terms of increased standards as well as information flowing out to industry. And as we've seen with the number of new building approvals happening all the time, the potential impact in terms of improved energy efficiency and increased livability of our homes is enormous. To find out more about the CSR House, head to joshushouse.com.au where you can explore all of the houses that are part of the Star Performance Series, as well as watch other videos and access heaps of free information. And don't forget to follow the project via our social media pages. Together, let's see what's possible for the future of our homes. In the next episode of Josh's House Star Performers, I'm heading to Townsville in northern Queensland, where I'll visit the passionate owner of a local building company and his family who have just moved into their impressive, tropical high-performance home that has some real surprises and plenty of fruit. Oh,